Lionhearts, we are back in Hollywood. I don't know how I feel about that. All I can tell you is I had a great trip. Um, I got to see things I always wanted to see in my life. And I developed an even heavier obsession for the Rolling Stones than I ever had before. Um, so, what's up? Well, Jaws, what's up? Yep, he's back. And we're going to take him to the park. And then I have a full day of things later on today. So, uh, you know, we got to give Jaws his time now. So, Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. Put your shoes on, hero. Let's go to the park. What do you say? Would you like to go to the park with me? Not too many dogs here yet, two or three. Where's Sam at? Sam jumped into my lap a little bit ago and then he tore out of here. Where is he? Huh? There he is. In my lap and out of my lap. He got a little bit of playing in, but not a ton. So when we get back, I want to go get a haircut and then I'm planning on going downtown for a couple of things today. All right, I'm gonna try and head out and get a haircut and see if I can't morph this video into the final result. Well, there it is. It's in that uncomfortable, freshly cut stage before I shower and all that stuff, but I think it looks pretty good. I was kind of shocked at how good it looked when he, uh, when he finished up. They always kind of go too far, but it was okay. <laughs> I walked in and you were watching my trip on YouTube and your tail was just going crazy. Did you miss me? You did? What do you think of my haircut? Eh, whatever. Alright, we're gonna hop on the train and go downtown. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to check out today. And uh, first things first, you know, let's go to the Grammy Museum. came to the Grammy Museum today is because apparently they have some sort of um, baseball and guitars exhibit and it's only for a limited time so I want to go check it out. All right here we are and that's the exhibit. You know me I love baseball I love rock and roll let's check it out. Okay so um, I have heard that they have actually changed up quite a few things since I was here last so we'll check it out. Well, they sure did change things up. This is the case that was always the Michael Jackson case. And um, I'm wondering if it was just um, time to change out the exhibit or if they were doing it for a, uh, a reason, you know. But this is the commemorative Take Me Out to the Ball Game exhibit. Interesting, it says this is the Anaheim Angels guitar, Stratocaster. Fender's first foray into working with the MLB was through a fundraiser for the Anaheim Angels charity in 2002. The same year they won the World Series, Fender created two Stratocasters featuring the Angels logo. And it looks like it's signed. Doesn't say who it's signed by. Um, oh no it does, it says Scott Spezio, but that's not who I would have guessed. I would have guessed John Lackey because he was, uh, he was a rookie that year and pitch the final game and everything but it's kind of cool their entry into MLB baseball now that one is an opening day rocks Pittsburgh Pirates from 2007 guitar that's really cool they should have done a Reds one it says Fed Fender created a Pittsburgh Pirates opening day rock Stratocaster for promotions around opening day 
but it doesn't say why they chose the Pirates. Huh. It's not like the Pirates have historically been a great team for like the last, I don't know, since the 70s, since the Dave Parker team, so. There is a Fender baseball. Now this is actually really cool and it actually makes a lot of sense. This is a Telecaster called the Moving Forward New York Yankees 2009 Tele and it's done um, in honor of Bernie Williams. Bernie Williams is um, as well known for being a great baseball player for the Yankees and having his number retired as well as being a phenomenal guitar player. To this day, since he retired, he's been releasing records consistently and performing. He was even at the NAMM show this year. And you can see he signed it to Fender Best Wishes, Bernie Williams. And that was the inaugural stadium when they, or the inaugural year from when they went from the old Yankee Stadium to the new one. So the Stratocaster is signed by the 2007 champion, Boston Red Sox. So that would have been like Kevin Euclid's, um, Big Poppy, David Ortiz, you would have had, um, who else, uh, Manny Ramirez, of course. Now that one is the Jackie Robinson Telecaster, which just looks amazing. It says it was done for the 100th birthday of Jackie Robinson. And Jackie Robinson actually grew up out here in Pasadena, so he was a local. He went to UCLA, and it's a great tribute to him. And you can see down at the very bottom, they did a celebration concert for it. And then this was a special guitar because this was the 2012 100th anniversary of Fenway Park, making it the oldest baseball stadium. And uh, they modeled this design after the Green Monster, which is the, uh, the big wall in left field that's a uh, that's kind of a dream vlog for me I want to go see Fenway Park at some point very cool very cool you can see the old scoreboard up there and it says that Fender created five of these at the time I don't know and it says all in the um, in the memory of the green monster right there but I don't know if every single guitar looks exactly the same now this guitar is made out of the same type of ash that they make baseball bats out of and they're saying that um, they got these, this particular wood from the Cooperstown area which is where the Baseball Hall of Fame is and that they said now um, with American ash species being at risk of extinction um, it says they're developing, it's because of pest problems they said. Now it keeps going on and boy does it keep going on. It's got some really great memorabilia in here. Different songs that were famous around the ballpark. You can see, let's get the umpire's goat. Come on to the baseball game. That's all sheet music. The umpire song, the baseball waltz. And over here you've got Frank Sinatra, Esther Williams, Gene Kelly. Take me out to the ball game. Now here they have a facsimile of the original handwritten lyrics to Take Me Out to the Ball Game by Jack Norworth. Katie Casey was baseball mad, had the fever, and had it bad. Yeah, the first verse doesn't even, we don't even sing th these days. And there's some of the sheet music for it. And there's old Jack, and I'm pretty sure that he's buried out here. And there are the take me out to the ball game stamps from the US Postal Service. Here they've got a little tribute to the great Harry Carey, the Chicago Cubs broadcaster. And it, I didn't realize it um, until I'm reading this. It says, um, in 1976, Chicago White Sox announcer Harry Carey, at the urging of the team owner, Bill Veek, began singing take me out to the ball game during the seventh inning stretch at White Sox home games. I didn't know that. I thought he was always with the Cubs. 
And then it says in 82, when Carrie moved to the Chicago Cubs broadcast booth, he continued singing the song. And that became a tradition. Um, it said eventually became a much anticipated tradition at the Wrigley Field. And one of Carrie's most famous antics in front of the microphone says Carrie passed away in 1998. Since then, guest singers of Take Me Out to the Ball Game at Wrigley Field honor Carrie's legacy. The list includes many Cubs legends as well as Jay Leno, Chuck Berry, Eddie Vedder, Ozzy Osbourne, John Fogarty, Lou Rawls, Muhammad Ali, Cindy Lauper, and Mike Ditka. And then this little 45 is Harry Carey singing, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And then here's his Harry Carey's WGN microphone. It says from the 1980s. That's the actual one. How cool is that? Now you can't talk baseball without talking my probably favorite player ever. This is a replica Babe Ruth jersey. And they have a replica bat of his. George Herman Ruth. And then a replica hat. They were much different back then. They were much smaller. The Babe Ruth model glove. And then up here you see a lot of different songs. Babe Ruth stealing home, we know what he can do. And it says, as America's first great baseball hero, Babe Ruth was the inspiration of many great baseball songs, most of them paying homage to Ruth's home run hitting prowess. Unfortunately, only a few of these songs withstood the test of time, and many remain buried in baseball history. Huh, it says, among the memorable favorites were um, Irving Berlin's Along Came Ruth, Our Bambino, Babe Ruth, he is a home run guy. That's cool. There's Jolton Joe DiMaggio, former husband of Marilyn Monroe, and had the longest hitting streak in history. It's an autographed baseball, and I see right there on the sweet spot, we see Yogi Berra and Mickey Mantle both have signed it. it says the 1960 Yankees. And check that out. It says, from the collection, or from the estate of Johnny and Linda Ramone. Whoa! It's a Mickey Mantle model glove. And a Mickey Mantle replica jersey. Then we have an official Rawlings signed baseball of Mickey Mantle. Then you can see a record over here. My favorite hits, Mickey Mantle. And then there used to be a ballpark, Frank Sinatra. There's Frank singing in, looks like Dodger Stadium. Or it might have been Ebbets Field. All oh, 44, it would have been Ebbets Field. That is a baseball autographed Holy Cow by Phil Scooter Rizzuto. There's the greats of baseball singing, take me out to the ball game on there. You can see Phil Rizzuto up there, Ray Campanella. I'm not quite sure what the Bat Out of Hell reference, why they have a meatloaf record and this of meatloaf, but they do. There's a shirt from Ebbets Field commemorating its existence. I mean, they obviously moved out here to LA, played in the LA Coliseum for a few years and then Dodger Stadium. Then there's the record a Bro Brooklyn baseball fan by Phil Foster. That's cool. They have a Jackie Robinson commemorative jersey here. And then a playbill about Jackie's life. The first. Then we have Frank Sinatra's jacket. That's awesome. Look at all that. That is so great. Danny Kay up there doing a Dodger song. Don Drysdale. No Hitter by Bill Singer. And there's a little 45 called Johnny Padres Has a Halo Around His Head by Alan Swift, 1955. He was a pitcher for the Dodgers. And that's Ernie Banks' jersey and Ernie Banks' hat. And then a guitar signed by Ernie Banks. And that is a Dropkick Murphys shirt from playing at Fenway Park. Then there's Nancy Foss, Jenkins, and the White Sox. That baseball card is a Detroit baseball card of Jack White. From the White Stripes and everything else in the world of music. <laughs> They've even made up kind of a Hall of Fame type plaque for him as well. 
And then Sweet Caroline, of course, that's the traditional song for the Boston Red Sox. And that is Jack White's baseball bat. And then that is a seven inch of Bless You Boys, This Is The Year for the 1984 Detroit Tigers. And that was managed by Sparky Anderson with the great Kirk Gibson, Alan Trammell, all those guys. Now let's see what else they have over here in the world of baseball. Those are all microphones. That's pretty cool. Pretty much anything that ever had a baseball reference. There's Alabama cheap seats. Shania Twain, George Strait, Leanne Womack, baseball cards. Then this is James Taylor's stuff. This is uh, the Angels of Fenway song. And it's a signed hat by him as well as a t-shirt from the event. And then this is Ella Fitzgerald at a Dodger game singing. How cool is that? Lena Horn at a Royals game. That's Nat King Cole, the first baseball game record. Star Spangled Banner. Oh yeah, Roseanne grabbing her crotch. <laughs> Okay, they've got some more stuff over here. I see Barry Zito's jersey from when he was uh, an Oakland A, and then you've also got the San Francisco Giants hat because Barry Zito releases records too. You can see his CD up here. And that's his World Series ring from 2012 as a Giant, and then lyrics from his uh, some of his notebooks. That's pretty cool. Check out the ring. And then of course that's Bruce Springsteen and then glory days right above it. Now that's really cool. That's John Fogarty's um, slugger bat and he's known for put me in coach. I'm ready to play. That's a center field song and uh, he used to play that guitar and look I mean it just looks like a Louisville slugger bat. I love it. it says a longtime baseball fan John Fogarty referenced Joe DiMaggio, Willie Mays and Ty Cobb in the song lyrics and later explained that the line about brown eyed handsome man was a nod to Jackie Robinson. And that is Bob Dylan's baseball glove and uh, ball. And that black bat is also Bob Dylan's bat. Of course you can't forget about the natural with Robert Redford. I mean that's just an absolute classic in the baseball world. And the Grateful Dead nights that they used to have. I mean they still do in San Francisco but yeah Grateful Dead nights, the James Taylor concert, Pearl Jam up there in Seattle, the Beatles at Shea Stadium. Oh that's awesome Jerry Garcia tribute night. This is so cool check this out. The Ramones apparently were huge baseball fans because it's got Johnny Ramones transistor radio that he used to listen to the games, a signed baseball that he got himself, and then this is a photo album of him collecting autographs. And you can see in there Sandy Koufax and... Oh! Do you see? Look right there. That's Chuck Connors, the rifleman. Right there on the, uh, the right side of the opening. That's crazy. And Johnny Ramones baseball mitt. What a great exhibit. They did such a great job on this. Bob Dylan and Willie Nelson. Gotta love it. That is a fantastic case. That was worth, this right here was just worth the admission as it is. They have a 60 of baseball's greatest songs jukebox over here. See what they got in there. Center field, Kenny Rogers, the greatest. Baseball card lover rocking Richie Ray, Ry Cooter, third base, Bob Dylan take me out to the ball game. And this whole case is all dedicated to the musical Damn Yankees. You can see this version has Popeye's dad, Ray Walston from the movie. And then you've got over here Jerry Lewis, of course. Jerry Lewis trading card. And then even that version of the Damn Yankees is in here. <laughs> Ted Nugent and Tommy Shaw's band. See, that's also pretty cool. You can see that Bernie Williams is two number one singles charted in Billboard, the smooth jazz. Number one. So I told you Johnny Ramone was a big fan, and here we go. An entire case dedicated to Johnny Ramone. You have him here playing baseball as a kid. It looks like he's waiting to go to a ball game. Then over here, you've got a photo of him and Eddie Vedder. Polaroids with the uh, the scores on there. 
<laughs> look what he wrote there. Look what happened to Eddie Vedder. There he is in a Yankees jacket. And apparently he liked to keep the scores as well because it says it's a 1964 New York Yankees scorecard. And then down here it says we've got a scorecard from 63 and 65 and he's done the entire game. And this says this is a letter um, <laughs> to uh, Joe Wood Jr. signed John Cummings, Johnny Ramone. Then here's him writing a fan letter to Alan Ramirez, also when he was a kid, signing it John Cummings, and then there's the response below it. Then that was a letter that Johnny wrote to George Thomas Bradshaw. So I come here enough as it is that I just went ahead and ponied up and uh, I bought an annual pass and became like a supporter of the Grammy Museum. So we'll be here a lot from now on.